out, it is. And Hel Nieto circuit about to come alive. It is 25 laps, 68.7 miles of MotoGP. The so everyone's been buzzing about MotoGP T going electric, right? All these whispers about hybrids taking over the grid in 2026 had fans and insiders expecting some kind of futuristic sci-fi scene on race day. But then the lights go out at the season opener. Engines scream into life and the sound? It's the same gut-punching, hair-raising roar of pure combustion madness that fans live for. But here's the twist. It's not what people think. There's no hybrid system kicking in mid-corner. No silent electric whir as bikes slip past each other. The truth is, 2026 isn't about introducing hybrids at all. It's actually something far more calculated and way more game-changing in the long run. What's really going on is a full-on pause in development. For one season only, manufacturers are locked into their 2025 engines. No upgrades, no tweaks, no secret horsepower bumps. Just run what you brought, and that's it. It's like MotoGP slammed the brakes to line everyone up before launching into a whole new era. This freeze isn't just about slowing things down. It's a calculated move to level the playing field and give every team a fair shot before the biggest reset the sport has seen in decades hits in 2027. Picture it as the deep breath before the dive. Every manufacturer now gets the same engine spec, and all the money and brain power shifts toward the future. But not everyone is frozen in place. Teams like Honda and Yamaha, who've been having a rough time lately, still get to work on their engines unless they magically climb out of their slump. In that case, they'll be reined in like everyone else. What this means is 2026 could become one of the most unpredictable seasons in recent memory. With engine development taken out of the equation, it's all about setup, rider performance, and team execution on race weekends. Even the smallest edge in chassis tuning or electronics refinement could be the difference between a podium and a midfield finish. There's also a renewed emphasis on trackside decision-making, where weather shifts, tire wear, and rider intuition play bigger roles than sheer power. Mid-tier teams now have a real shot at upsetting the big names because the performance ceiling has been locked. Riders who can adapt quickly to evolving race conditions, manage tires wisely, and execute consistent lap times are going to shine more than ever. It's also forcing manufacturers to be more resourceful in how they extract performance, especially since the only changes allowed are for safety or reliability. Behind the scenes, engineers are diving deeper into data, finding micro adjustments that can translate into tenths of a second on track. In a season where nobody can out-engine anyone else, creativity becomes king. And let's not forget the mental pressure this puts on the riders. They know this is the last dance with the current generation of bikes. Every result, every overtake, every mistake. It all matters a little more. The fans? They're getting a rawer, more competitive spectacle with closer racing and fewer predictable outcomes. 2026 might just turn out to be a classic, not because of new tech, but because everyone's stuck with the same cards and has to figure out how to play them better than the rest. Now, 2027, that's where things get wild. Forget hybrids for a second. What's coming is a full-blown reinvention of MotoGP. Engine capacity gets chopped from 1,000 cubic centimeters to 850 cubic centimeters. Aero is stripped back, goodbye oversized winglets, and sustainable fuel becomes the name of the game. And not just any biofuel. We're talking about synthetic fuels made by pulling carbon straight out of the atmosphere. The science behind it is wild. These fuels are lab-made, tested for carbon neutrality, and designed so the CO2 that goes into the air during combustion is exactly what was taken out. The result? Zero net emissions. Tank sizes shrink too, which means less fuel per race. That's gonna shake up strategy across the board. Full length races get 20 liters, while sprint races are limited to just 11. It doesn't stop there. 
the max bore size gets cut down, the number of engines allowed per season is reduced, and, maybe the most important change, ride height devices are getting the ax. No more whole shot systems. It's all about raw rider skill again. But still, there's this one big thing that never showed up in the new rulebook, hybrid tech. And no one was more surprised about that than Gigi Daligna, the mastermind behind Ducati's recent dominance. He was straight up expecting it. In fact, he was pushing for it. His thinking? If all that energy from braking could be reused instead of wasted, why not go for it? He even floated the idea of having a single hybrid supplier to keep costs in check. And honestly, the system he envisioned wasn't just sci-fi fantasy, it was technically solid. Daligna's push for hybrids wasn't about chasing headlines. It came from a deep understanding of racing efficiency. He saw hybrid systems as a logical evolution for high-performance motorcycles, especially in a sport where every fraction of energy matters. He argued that the energy lost under braking could be captured and reused for acceleration, a move that would have made bikes not just faster, but smarter. There's a case to be made that this type of innovation could have added a whole new layer of complexity to racing, where riders and engineers manage not only fuel and tires, but also battery charge and boost timing. It wouldn't have replaced traditional racing, it would have enhanced it. Daligna even acknowledged the challenge of cost, suggesting a controlled rollout with standardized hybrid components, something already done successfully in other motorsports like Formula One. What frustrated him most wasn't that the technology wasn't ready. It was that the vision wasn't embraced. He sees a future where pure mechanical systems feel outdated, not because they're slow, but because they waste so much potential energy. His view is rooted in long-term thinking, not just how to win next season, but how to keep MotoGP at the cutting edge for the next two decades. And coming from the man who helped turn Ducati into the powerhouse it is today, that's not something to be ignored. The fact that the sport is choosing to wait to delay this integration doesn't mean the idea is gone. It's parked. And if Daligna's track record is anything to go by, it might just roar back when the timing's right. There's this concept designed by Mario Uncini Manganelli, a motorsport engineer with some serious credibility. He laid out a plan for a 750 cubic centimeter V4 paired with a compact electric motor, delivering a quick burst of power right after throttle input. Around 27 extra horsepower used in short boosts, enough to give riders an edge without overwhelming the racing DNA. Regenerative braking would capture energy during deceleration, and the whole package would add about 28 kilos to the bike. That's not nothing, but it's workable. And yet, that plan didn't make the cut. The reason? Moto E. After seven seasons, Moto E is being shelved. It never really caught fire. Despite switching to Ducati-built electric machines, the series just didn't connect with fans. Fewer broadcasters wanted to carry it, and the vibe wasn't right. Even the president of FIM admitted it failed to meet expectations. The bottom line? Electric racing didn't stick the landing, fans weren't into it, and the motorcycle market didn't support it either. So MotoGP looked at all this and decided to hold off. Manufacturers aren't rushing to build electric superbikes for consumers, and the interest just isn't there yet. Even Honda's only hybrid bike is a scooter. Not exactly the performance beast people were hoping for. And that tells a bigger story. The road market is a reflection of where the real demand lies. And right now, it's not with high-performance electric or hybrid machines. Riders still crave the connection, the sound, the mechanical feel that comes with combustion. It's not just about lap times, it's about soul. Until electric or hybrid bikes can offer that same emotional hit, both on the road and on track, mass acceptance just won't happen. Manufacturers know this and they're waiting for both the technology and the audience to catch up. So for now, the hybrid dream takes a back seat. Not because it can't work, 
But because the world isn't quite ready for it, MotoGP is watching, waiting, and planning its next move carefully. And here's the funny thing. Technically, hybrids make total sense. They could deliver more torque, especially in the low rev range, and give riders that extra punch out of corners. But it would completely change how racing works. Energy deployment would become a tactical game. Teams could choose to use the boost early or save it for the final laps. Suddenly, race strategy isn't just about tire life, it's about energy conservation too. Imagine riders balancing boost usage like fuel mapping today. Engineers would monitor battery levels as closely as tire temps, and the mental side of racing would evolve too. Riders would have to think about conserving battery for the right moment, knowing one wrong move could blow their race. There's also the elephant in the room, weight. Hybrid systems add a noticeable chunk to the bike, and that affects everything from handling to braking. Batteries need cooling, the electronics need space, and marshals would need new training to handle electrical safety in a crash. It's not a plug-and-play upgrade. It's a total rethink of how MotoGPI bikes are built and raced. But just because the rules don't include hybrids now doesn't mean no one's working on them. Manufacturers are already experimenting behind the scenes. Ducati's been seen testing bikes with mysterious carbon casings around the engines that could easily be hiding electric components. And companies like Morelli and Bosch, who already supply electronics in MotoGP, have the know-how to build a standardized hybrid system. If that ever happens, it could level the playing field and keep costs down, just like the spec ECU did years ago. Hybrid systems would open up a whole new world of race dynamics. Energy deployment could be optimized for different tracks, long straights, go full boost, tight circuits, use it to rocket out of corners, and qualifying. That would become its own chess game. Use all your energy for a hot lap or save some for race day. Teams would be forced to make decisions that could make or break weekends. The physical side of riding could shift too. Extra weight changes the bike's behavior in corners. That might require different riding positions or even new training routines. Younger riders who've grown up with electric vehicles might adapt quicker, while veterans might need time to adjust. And beyond MotoGP, this shift would influence the entire racing landscape. World Superbike, national championships, and even grassroots series would eventually follow. The tech would trickle down into road bikes, just like ABS and traction control once did. And schools and universities would start producing engineers who specialize in energy systems, hybrid drivetrains, and electric boost strategies. A whole new ecosystem could emerge. Still, this kind of change doesn't come cheap. Teams would need bigger budgets, more engineers, more tools, and more transport capacity. That kind of money could drive smaller teams out unless the series steps in with cost control measures. But there's a silver lining. Hybrid racing could attract sponsors from tech and energy sectors, brands that wouldn't normally be into motorcycles. That extra funding might just balance the books. Manufacturers could also justify the investment by transferring hybrid tech into road bikes. Racing's always been a testing ground for future innovation and this would be no different. But it only works if consumers are ready to buy hybrid performance bikes. And so far, that's not really the case. Still, things are changing. Younger buyers seem more open to electric mobility. And as battery tech improves, hybrids could become lighter, faster, and more efficient. By 2032, the next likely big rule change after 2027, MotoGP might be in a perfect spot to finally introduce hybrids properly. By then, batteries with double the current energy density could make those 28 kilogram weight penalties a thing of the past. There's also the hydrogen wild card. The big four Japanese brands, Honda, Yamaha, Suzuki, and Kawasaki, are collaborating on hydrogen engine development. That's another possible path towards sustainable racing that still delivers that visceral, combustion-driven experience fans crave. Either way, what's clear is that 2026 
is the last stand of the current MotoGP format. It's one final dance for the 1,000cc monsters before the curtain falls and the sport shifts into a whole new phase. The 850 cubic centimeter engines and sustainable fuels coming in 2027 are only the beginning. After that, the door swings wide open for hybrid systems, hydrogen engines, or whatever the next big leap looks like. This isn't the end of pure racing. It's the start of something smarter, faster, and more connected to the world around it. The revolution's been delayed, sure, but it's far from canceled. Thanks for watching. For more deep dive content like this, behind the scenes stories, and stunning MotoGP visuals, make sure to subscribe to our channel.